Welcome to CVSKL EP Lab. This morning, we are doing a very exciting case of atrial fibrillation ablation using the new energy source, which is non-thermal. For the last 20 years of AF ablation, we have been using what we call thermal energy. And this can either be using radio frequency or using cryo energy. It means you either kill the cells by heating it up or you can kill the cells that cause the AF by freezing it. One of the issues about those technologies is that there's always a risk. It can cause damage to the surrounding tissue, including the pulmonary vein itself, causing pulmonary vein stenosis, phrenic nerve injury, and the most feared complication is LA esophageal fistulas. For a long, long time, researchers have been trying to find alternatives, and PFA is one of them, it's non-thermal. And because it's non-thermal and it's quite specific to just the myocardial cells, it has been shown that it is safer risk to causing injuries to the pulmonary vein, phrenic nerve, esophagus are much, much less. Now, this is of course very relative. It depends on the experience of the operator. For us, in CVSKL, we do about at least 100 AF ablations a year and we've had very good results with both radio frequency and the cryo balloon. But of course, new technology is always very exciting. There is a reason. We embrace it and after waiting for at least a year, we have gotten approval from Malaysian authorities and we have started our program at CVSKL. So, patient is a relatively young man with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, no other risk factors, chat vesicle of zero, and he has uh, echo which is normal size. I think this is a perfect candidate because all he needs is pulmonary vein isolation, which we can do. We chose the PFA after discussing with the patients the pros and cons. So, I just finished my case of uh, atrial fibrillation ablation using pulse field energy. Very exciting times. The case was done successfully. Patients under general anesthesia. We always do transesophageal echo to make sure there's no clots in the left atrium. The transeptal puncture is also guided by TE. We also map the pulmonary veins and left atrium before we do PFA. And I wanted to make sure that for at least a couple of cases of PFA, that we understand where the lesions are, we understand how good these PFA lesions are, and that's why I prefer to do mapping with 3D before and after the ablation. And then we choose our PFA catheter. In terms of timing, I think it is slightly faster than point by point using radio frequency. But I must emphasize, at the end of the day, we are not so much interested in the speed. What we are interested to make sure that when we do a procedure for the patient, we get the best result. And the best result is first and foremost, safety. Above even success is safety of the patient. So any technology, any procedure we do, we place a lot of emphasis to make sure that the procedure is safe for the patient. The best feeling for me personally is I see the patient follow up. The patient has maybe before the procedure AF episodes many times a week some of them many times a day and then when the patient comes to see me the first two weeks the first one month to one year and he has not a single episode of AF and I think that makes us really really very happy that we have contributed something the quality of life improved for the patient but more important than that if there's no AF then there is no risk of stroke and there's no risk for heart failure. And I think at the end of the day, it is very important for all of us doctors to be able to understand each strength and weaknesses of all these technologies tailor made the procedure for all our patients. In conclusion, I think these are exciting times for atrial fibrillation ablation. You have a procedure that is safe and that is effective that will ensure that the patient is free from atrial fibrillation with just one procedure. And I think the message here should be when you have AF, don't wait until it becomes persistent. Because when it becomes persistent, then the ablation is not as good. So for doctors, referring doctors, for patients who are listening to this, if you do have AF and AF is troubling you, please consider ablation of AF earlier rather than wait until fail medical therapy and the AF becomes more difficult for us to cure. Thank you.